Virgo, welcome to your May 2020 love reading. It's Raina here. Before I continue, because I haven't done love readings, I don't think, in a while. I'm not sure. I used to do them every month, and I stopped doing them all the time. I do, have done different variations since then. And um, I think some people are confused about what a love reading is. For me, a love reading for me is that you're either single, and it's just for fun, just like any other type of reading, where you're just saying, okay, like, what do the cards say? You know, what are my uh, opportunities, or what should I look for if you're single? And if you're in a relationship, um, sometimes I've done separate relationship readings. This is going to be for everyone who's in a relationship. And if they are in a relationship, it's for people who are already having problems. It's not for people who are looking for problems. If you're looking, if you're insecure, you're in a happy relationship and you're insecure about that, then that's something you have to really um, think long and hard about why you're, um, why you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. That's not what this is about. If you're happy, be happy in your relationship. Don't, you know, think, oh, this is too good to be true. There must be something that's going to happen. So I'm going, I'm going to go on YouTube and find a, a love reading. No, this is for people who already are in uh, problems um, of one sort or the other. And this is just to, you know, th these cards are merely to give some sort of guidance um, based on the symbolism and the synchronicity of the cards that I draw. Not to take too seriously... Um, ultimately, you are the co-creator in your reality. The heart of the matter is the Page of Cups. Now, this can be, you know, if you've had kind of a drought dating, the Page of Cups can be that um, you may have gotten your heart broken more than once, Virgo. Maybe you're the kind of person who is very um, taking people as they come. It, do you have the moon in uh, Pisces? This card is connected to Pisces, so it's that Piscean energy. And um, perhaps there's somebody that's a sign of Pisces that uh, you're sweet on. <laughs> um, and if, if you are currently in a relationship that is rocky, then perhaps there is some element of gullibility on your end that is, you know, I don't want to say to blame, but is definitely figuring into things here. And basically what I mean by that is that, you know, relationships sometimes give uh, red flags that we need to look at. We can't bury our heads in the sand. And when you do do that, what happens, it doesn't, it prolongs the agony, basically. And, you know, I have the moon in Virgo, so I don't think Virgo people are really gullible by nature. That's why I said, if you're a Virgo, maybe you have um, the moon in another sign and you have uh, Neptune the moon in a hard angle to Neptune, or Venus in a hard angle to Neptune, and that makes you just a little bit um, lost in fantasy when it comes to relationships. Who knows? I'm just going to keep going with the relationship, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> I mean, going along with the reading, not the relationship. In the past position, we have the Six of Pentacles. This is, you see the scales, and the person handing out a gold, gold coin, and um, in in general, I, I see that as give-and-take in relationships. 
so many times there's one person who is giving of themselves and the other person is taking and the person who is giving sometimes doesn't fully understand this i mean let's face it or i'll just tell you that it does irk me when people give and they're just constantly reminding the other person well you know i did this and i did that that's not what i'm talking about i think that that would be bad too but i'm talking about um kind of like trying to give hoping for that person to care about you and believing that that's even possible believing that if you give them whether it's financial resources or um as i was going to say for some reason it popped in my head a place to live but you know even just on the emotional level like calling them and they never call you you know this can even be with friendships sometimes where one person is much more active and taking on the responsibility of maintaining the relationship than the other person and that's you know those are the times when it's good to see that for what it is and and be able to take it from there and a lot of a lot of times um i feel like the reason people don't do that isn't bec necessarily because they're so gullible but because they feel that it's some indictment against them that it says that they aren't good enough they're not interesting enough as a friend or they're not um beautiful or handsome enough as a part as a romantic partner or uh lovable or what have you and being able to to you know see a situation like that very soberly and not you know feel bad towards yourself is something that it, it may not come easily but it has to come at some point because that's the only way to really maintain that kind of healthy self-esteem. Otherwise, everything is dependent on the other person. And I just realized something. If you are a um the, another thing too is if you are a Virgo and you have inner plants in Libra, that could certainly cuz Libra is adjacent to you and you may be more likely to fall into this trap. I was thinking in terms of the literal sign of Pisces but now that I think about it it could even be that as well and simply because you're just so into this idea of wanting to be in that relationship but not really questioning whether or not it's a mutual thing and that's how I see the six of pentacles is this idea of um give and take um and you know if this is an established relationship this could have some kind of like literal monetary um situation going on where you are dealing with someone who is um not being honest about the money and you're believing the lies um so maybe you're the one that's working and giving that other person money to spend or you have a, a joint bank account and that person is you know withdrawing funds and and making up excuses or or maybe not even making up excuses saying well we're married so I get to do this and they're really not um offering any kind of um willingness to 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 kind of contribute in that way the higher message is the world card so looking at this from a wider perspective or a higher perspective um for people who are in a relationship it can mean that the relationship has run its course that whatever you were meant to learn in that relationship has happened and now it's just it's all over but the shouting and that it's time to move on it may mean that you're kind of dragging the sun far longer than you should um also with the page of cups and you are you, you are with somebody there may be the issue of a child and the uh, who's going to pay for it um child support kind of an issue if you're if you are someone who is single the world card can literally mean about travel but 
in a spiritual perspe uh, perspective, it can mean that you never know where you're going to meet the person that you're meant to be with. So if you're the kind of individual who has gotten some kind of an offer either to study abroad or work in a different country and for whatever reason you've kind of declined it, think about the possibility that if you've gotten this offer there may be a a greater um, meaning to it. It's not just going to be like a, a source of employment but it could be where you meet the person that you end up settling down with and and you know think about it it happens all the time where people they might travel half across you know the world and they end up meeting the the love of their life so you have to broaden your perspective in other words in order to realize this What crosses you is the Five of Pentacles, and this can even be the other person. If this is related to a relationship, that person may uh, be unemployed, and they, if especially if you're like married and so your finances are tied together, they may have this excuse of why they can um, spend the money. Um, and... Um, the other thing, too, is if that you're tolerating a relationship that isn't what it should be, you could have poverty consciousness. This is what this card represents, where you are, um, you know, seeing the glass half empty in your life and saying, what if I can't have anything better than this? I might as well stick with what I have. And that's kind of like you know, seeing your life as being limited by, you know, somebody that you are currently involved with and not realizing that by staying with somebody that you're not happy with, that limits, that actually does limit you from a further relationship with somebody who is right for you. So it's just kind of... Um, about flipping the script and not seeing things as so doomsday. And um, if you're single, the same thing applies. Like you may um, see whatever is going on right now as indicative of what's going to happen in the future. Well, well that's not true. Whatever's happening right now is a product of past actions and beliefs. So it doesn't indicate the present moment. It just indicates um, how you have thought up until now. So you have the power to change your belief pattern. What's coming in is represented by the Queen of Swords. This can also be advice. So in terms of advice, I would say being able to put your feelings aside for the <laughs> I'm like what the heck is that loud holy moly um, putting aside your feelings for the sake of um, what you need to do there may be something you need to do and with swords we're talking about air and it's detached. It's not emotional. The queen represents the water element, which is emotions and is emotionally involved. But being able to put that aside so that you are able to see, to, to do what you need to do, um, perhaps with the world card, if you are thinking of leaving a situation, that you're able to leave it without there being drama without there being any kind of um, uh, what do they call that like residual emotions that keep the people going back and forth but that you're very this is this can be about making a decision but that you're very self-assured with that decision you're not a wavering in other words and the 
outcome is a six of wands. This is a card of victory. This is a card of um, recognition. But, you know, it's interesting because in this context, I really think, Virgo, that it's coming from within yourself, that you're honoring yourself. And this is because this card is connected to Leo, if I'm not mistaken. And Leo is a sign of great pride. And we've, you know, we've taken the word pride to mean um, narcissism or just pure out egotism. But pride is a good thing, as long as it is um, not arrogant. Just having that sense of, I deserve better, is there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And when you make those kinds of choices, you feel that you are, um, you know, uplifting yourself. If you're single, um, it's possible that you will meet somebody that is um, of the sword element, maybe water and air. And, you know, it's funny because since you're Virgo, perhaps the water signs, I mean, you know, perhaps the, the Pisces is a person that you're interested in. And uh, I think that's a good combination, water and air, because it, it, um, it can balance off the emotions with more detachment, more objectivity. So the, the point is that for all of you, there's a, a feeling of having won the battle, if you will. And uh, this is something that people who are looking for love sometimes feel like it is a struggle to find that person who is right for them. I feel like the more we can be detached, and maybe that the Queen of Swords can be that, where um, you're not like closing off your feelings, but you're allowing yourself to detach from the need to have a relationship in this moment, and that you're going to trust the universe of when it's going to arrive, I feel like that's a perfect balance. So in any case, I hope that you enjoyed this Virgo. If you'd like a personal reading, the link to my site is below. I do a lot of astrology. I have to emphasize that because I am doing tarot here and people might think that I'm just a tarot reader, which wouldn't be bad, but that's not all that I do. I do mostly astrology. Uh, my Website is rainamoonastrology.com. Something's going on out there. And the link is below. Take care. Bye.